Hello and welcome to this Come to Jesus Daily devotional. I trust you are well. This week in our Luke series, we pick up with the account of Mary and Martha. And today, let's briefly consider how Jesus wants us to devote ourselves above all else to listening to him. Let's read again from Luke 10, 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet to, and lis- listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset by many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Today's lesson, Jesus again emphasises the importance of listening to his word and he uses Mary's example as a model for us. What are are we listening to? What do we give our attention to? Over recent days and weeks, how have you directed your mind? If, If we were to take a moment to list the various things we've read, watched, listened to, How much of our attention has been on Jesus and learning from him? And even when we are reading his word, are we actually listening and learning or are we going through formulas and habits? We all have access to more information than anyone in history and therefore we have never had more opportunity to direct our minds toward what feeds our souls or toward what is unhelpful to our hearts. In today's text, we see that although it was Martha who opened her home to him, it was Mary who opened her heart and mind to him and his word. Likewise, we can open our lives to Christ, but fail to learn from him as we should. Firstly, we see that Mary sat at the Lord's feet. Sitting at the feet of a teacher was the posture of a disciple. Mary's demeanour marks her out as a disciple. It would have been highly unusual at the time for a woman to take up such a position at the feet of a man as a disciple. So Luke is wanting to highlight that women, as we saw in in chapter 8 verses 1 to 3, women are also called to be disciples and to learn from Christ. Mary listened to what he said. Mary is presented as an exemplary disciple. Her example is designed to reinforce aspects of previous teaching from Luke. Firstly, her listening to Christ reminds us of our Lord's transfiguration in the previous chapter, where the Father had said from heaven in Luke 9.35, a voice came from, from, came from the cloud saying, This is my Son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And Mary is presented as one who is seeking to do this. She is listening to him. Secondly, she reminds us of the parable of the soils where Jesus re- revealed, we looked at, didn't we, earlier in this in this series, where Jesus revealed that he wants us to be good soil for his word. And we read in Luke 8, 15, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it by persevering, produce a crop. Mary is presented as good soil. Thirdly, Mary's example reminds us of the parable of the lamp that teaches us to let his word shine on us and shine through us, as we read in Luke 8, 18. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have will be taken from them. There's a great promise here, isn't there? That if, like Mary, we will listen... Our learning, what we do have, will grow and grow and grow. Mary reminds us. And finally, Mary reminds us and fits the definition of those whom Jesus defines as his family. In Luke 8, 21, we read, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. So in response, Jesus again emphasises the importance of listening to his word. And he uses Mary's example as a model for us. 
Do we listen to Jesus? Are we good soil for his word? Are we hiding from and hiding the light of his word? Are we behaving like Jesus' family who love his word? Are we, like Mary, valuing his word, his voice above all else in our lives? God bless you.